Hello, and welcome to another tale taken right from the shelves at the heart of the Jackals. As always, I'm your intrepid host, Lothran, and there's ever so much more to be said. But keep in mind, the records of these tales are quite old and tattered, while there will be a decent segment that are sequential after this one. There may be more in the future that are quite broken up again. If you enjoy this story, it's likely that many of the future weeks dedicated to it will be broken apart in a similar way to the first two parts that you've already been presented, this one and the previous. Nothing more I can do or say about it. So go grab a hearty meal, settle into a cozy spot, and pay careful attention to Thum, Part 8, The Icy Grip of Winter. So... You're gonna trade your percent to go back into the city like Darth did? One of the cold and shivering guards asked to the other. Hey! Hey Gimu, hey! What? Gimu cast a baleful glare at his fellow. You fell asleep. I know I did! I was resting my eyes like I said. How, how can you stand and be asleep like that? Is that all you wanted to ask? Can I get back to it in this bitter horrible night? What, what if Thumb wakes up and catches you? Never gonna happen. I wake up at the rusty squeak of his door. I've been doing this work for years. Oh, thank the shapes! By Arlo's brimming smile. You have to let me in to see Thum. Ethgar ran up to the pair of guards huddled around their simmering barrel in the bitter night air. The hardest and earliest winter in a hundred years had crushed Thum's entire workforce out and their hopes for success along the road, just a week into their exile beyond the relative comfort of the dome. Where do you think you are going? Gimu, Gimu, please, we've been through this a dozen times. Thum asked me to keep him posted on any updates to the procedure. I've had the most success so far. You have to let me in and talk to him. All you've done is dilute the seeds so they get lukewarm and fizzle for a few minutes. That's not progress. Please, please, I must get through to see Thum. It's very urgent. It's, I've made a major breakthrough, not like any of the other times. Well, I had an accident, but but trust me, Thum will want to be woken for this. No! Not again! Not after the ass-chewing I got last time I woke him up for you to argue for more seeds for your experiments. At this point, you'll have to wait till morning like everyone else. There's nothing you could do or show me to make me change my mind. Gimu stood firm, blocking the entrance to Thum's personal home. A small ramshackle affair after the previous one had been sold and furniture and parts to buy food and warm clothes for his most loyal workers and guards. You're sure there's nothing I can do to change your mind? Ethgar asked as he shoved his hands into his pockets of his ragged and tattered old coat. No doubt he'd sold the good one Thum had gifted him to help fund his precious experiments. Both guards continued to stare at the smaller, skinnier man down, even and calmly as they could for all the trouble Ethgar had caused both of them. Ethgar backed up onto the iron-hard ice of the roadway, now blocked with him passability to the spring thaw and who knew how long away it would be this terrible year. He took out a small glass bottle and an eyedropper, placing a sheet of thick steel on top of the four foot thick patch of ice. He carefully extracted three little drops of honey colored liquid and with extreme caution lighting the end of a long wooden stick on fire. Come on, this is pathetic. Gimu fell silent as the liquid burst into brilliant flame, so bright and hot that even a couple meters away he felt the hungry heat upon his face. So voracious were the flames that he wondered how Ethgar stood so close to them, while so small an amount of liquid continued to burn for several silent but wonderfully warm minutes. Okay, but you're reminding Thum who let you in after I go wake him up, got it? Gimu leveled an accusatory finger Ethgar's way before unlocking the door behind him and disappearing inside. The bitter cutting winds picked up in Gimu's absence as the two men silently let the world pass them by. So, how you been? Ethgar attempted a 
some small talk to take his mind off the horrendous daggers of slicing wind bursts against his face. Oh, you know, making a pretty bit of silver here and there, worrying about how much the next loaf of bread is going to cost. The man's name escaped Eskar, no matter how hard he tried to summon it. But he was glad of the sound of his voice for the slightest distraction from their sheer shared pain. Uh, yeah, I'll be, I'll be glad to get a bite to eat. I haven't had anything for a couple of days. You know, I have half a loaf and some cheese. Would you consider lighting a few more drops to trade for a chunk or two? He asked with a bit of a sly smile creeping onto his face. Well, it's a little dangerous, you see, Ethgar commented as he withdrew the glass bottle once more. I gathered. The guard presented his dark brown piece of hearty bread, ripping it in two and biting a good portion off of the larger half. Oh, oh okay, yeah, I'll do it. But I get the whole other piece, the whole, the whole other half of what you have there. Six drops this time. Ethgar thought about it long and hard, presenting his hand for the piece of bread and cheese as he replied, Deal! He shoved the bread into his mouth and the cheese into his pocket as he set up the galvan oil, six drops this time, lighting it with the same as distant as possible method as he enjoyed his first meal in days, going to stand next to the other man's side. That's a hell of a thing. The guard warmed his hands on the blazing inferno, melting the ice around like all the force of the most hateful and vengeful summer sun could ever hope to do. Hey, uh, what's your name, by the way? Ethgar asked of the man, the detail finally nagging at him a little too much. It's not important. The guard had to wince and turn his back to the flame, something he never imagined he'd have to do any time this winter. You always forget anyway. The guard waved him off with a light laugh and a grin. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to call you Lessix for less than six drops of Ethgar's oil. They shared a laugh at Ethgar's weak little joke. That's a pretty good one. <laughs> I told you the bitter winds would rub some good humor onto you right before they killed you. The man laughed right back to Ethgar, grabbing the smaller man jovially around the shoulder. In that perfect, most awkward moment to explain, Thum lunged out of the door, dressed in several layers of clothes, looking every bit angrier than any man had ever been before. What the fuck, Ethgar? If I could throw you to the stars! Thum fell silent as he noticed the flickering light of the crackling, spitting fire behind the pair before him. He pushed his way around them as Gimu followed after. Sweet mother of hive nectar! Why is it so blasted hot? Thum retreated from his approach to the blaze that began to heat the steel beneath it to a bright cherry red. I haven't figured that part out yet, Mr. Thum, Ethgar replied between bites of his amazingly delicious bread. How long is it going to burn this time? Gimu asked as he craned his neck to see the flame. Actually, it seems to burn only for a few minutes while it's in oil. If you add more, it just burns all the hotter without adding time to the length that it burns. Have you experimented with adding wood pulp or coal or other materials? Thum asked as he marveled at the intense heat fizzling out in the sudden small pond of ice before them all. Come inside, we'll talk more there. Actually, sir, I just need a new lab. I was uh, trying various combinations, but, well, at least... The heat you witnessed made me cautious, so I tried it with a mixture of coal and wood shavings and at a small amount, and most of my equipment is ruined from the explosion. Uh, ruined? Explosion? Did it burn down after, or... Thum looked down the road toward Ethgar's place, even further away from the city. Uh, no, uh, the mixture proved to be volatile, more, much more so than the oil. Seriously? Did you lose any of the seeds I gave you last time? I, I need those seeds. Oh, oh no, I, I keep those under my bed in a separate room. Okay, because that would have been a mountain of money down the drain. <sighs> Such a relief. How long till you can make more of this stuff? Uh, Ethgar's Oil, tentative name. Harn chimed in, grinning snidely toward Ethgar with a wink. Thum just waited for the inventor to respond. Uh... Well, it depends on how much you need me to make and the quality of the equipment. 
<laughs> How long, Ethgar? Thum got a little impatient as the last of the heat from the flame and the hot water that had absorbed it seemed to die off. Th this much took me since last time I was here, so at least a week? Okay, um... Gimu, take Ethgar and collect everyone that hasn't gone back into the city. Uh, get them into the meeting hall, men and families on one side, Ethgar's oil on the other. Uh, keep them warm, but don't overdo it. Uh, make sure you get everyone there, you know, gathered into one place so we don't have to heat every home and along the road. Um, give them whatever you need to, to get them in there, like more percent, uh, this year's profits, or options on next year. I, I just want everyone collected. Uh, make sure... Uh, I'll, I'll talk to you later. I... Harn, keep watch. Uh, Thumb stuffed another loaf of bread Harn's way. The man <sighs> looked at Ethgar and then Gimu, splitting the bread into three pieces, handing each of them one. Uh, what are you going to do, boss? Uh, Gimu asked as he pocketed his meal. Uh, <clears throat> I have to write up a missive to the farming septs. There's no way we can trade with the city right now, so we have to look elsewhere. Get to work. Thum slammed the door behind him. And so it is. Our time together has once more come to its completion. I hope each of you enjoyed the story as much as I did the telling of it. As always, I've been your shrewd host, Lothran. And this was Thum Part 8. The Icy Grip of Winter. Another tale from the heart of the jackals. And now, we must part our ways once more. Korvoth, guide them back along the proper path, to the safety they know all too well. Yes, Sir Lothrin. A pleasant greeting and a fond farewell to each and all. Please leave all your comments, questions, and kindnesses down below. None of that rude or terrible or cruel stuff though you keep that to yourself remember to like share and subscribe to help us learn spread and grow don't forget we strongly implore each and every one of you to do your absolute utmost to stay safe out there good night and good luck you'll need it bye 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 everybody See you again tomorrow. Stories every day. Bye-bye. 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 Goodbye.